is not being run in the interests of the country as a whole. And we've got to bear in mind that the rail network would never operate as a standalone business. It requires subsidy to uh, operate. You know, apart from the intercity stuff and some of the high frequency commuter stuff in and out of London, it ain't profitable. Now, the bit I really, really struggle with, as a railway by trade, I'm not saying this is a political angle, I'm saying this kind of as someone who's worked in the industry, is something that requires taxpayer support. <coughs> why or why do we allow private companies to hive off a dividend when they're doing it badly? Surely it should be run on a not for dividend basis. The only practical way to do that is within the public sector with a long term vision about what it can deliver for society as a whole. Because without the railway, fundamentally our economy would be in a really, really difficult place. With a much better performing and efficient railway run by the government, funded by the taxpayer, we end up with something that grows the economy. So for me, on economic grounds alone, before you get into the kind of political social grounds, the right way to go. On all that basis, I really hope that everyone can support all of this because for me, it's an economic and straightforward no brainer. But that will be your decision when we when we move to the to the vote. And then you look at Tony. Sure, I, I can support this. Not on the basis of finances that I can't see and figures that I can't see and I don't want to see. And I, don't. I support this on the information my residents give to me about the service that they receive. So democratically, I've got responsibility for people who've elected me to say, you've got a rubbish transport service, <laughs> train service that needs addressing. The government are not going to address it. The government are looking at privatising even further. If it's not working, mm -hmm. then you've got to listen to your residents and say, well, do you know what? We really need to go back to public service on that. If there's no further contribution, should we move that motion, Gordon, that that Gordon's proposing that I'm going to second, and we'll move to the main vote accordingly. <coughs>
for the motion, Chair, 14 for, one against, and five abstain. Four abstain, sorry. Okay, so that uh, motion is carried. And then if we can move to the substantive recommendation in the report, is that agreed? Excellent. Okay. Item number eight is public question time, and we've got a couple of questions from um, Mr. Andrew Wayne. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Wayne, if you want to come to the microphone and ask your questions before you. Thanks. Well, happy year to all your delegates for 2019 and the Transport Committee. My first question is about the Walrus card. If, if you were to use it, most of the places that accept it to charge it up are places like the shops and the railway stations. But most people will start their journey by bus. And obviously, they have to pay the fare to get to one of the other of the, these outlets to charge up their cards for like the Segways and stuff. So by that time, they've spent maybe half the price they paid for the Segway. Is there any prospect of actually moving it so you can actually purchase things like the Segway on the bus? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, obviously, we'll give you the full detailed response, and as you probably picked up from the discussion in the report that uh, Paul presented earlier, we are first and foremost in the process of trying to develop that online portal so people can buy um, over the internet and then pick up their smart save way on their walrus card on the bus or at a railway station that we can try to, to do that accordingly. But we'll give you a more detailed response within the next few days, Mr. Wayne. Question two is about Northern Rail. The most Saturdays, for as long as I can remember, they've been striking. Now, how how much longer do you reckon this is going to go on for? Because it seems like quite a regular occurrence when it, you know, every Saturday, people still want to go out. Some people still work, like myself, might have trouble getting to work and stuff, and we have less services. And obviously it does um, use a half of our, half of our region. Basically most of the services out of Lime Street are run by Northern Rail. And I think, aren't they doing upgrading work from Hunts Cross towards Liverpool Central Moorfield between the 19th of January and the 27th? Now surely, when that goes on, people start park break, we want to use their train services. What are we going to do then? Okay, thanks for that, Mr. Well. I think the first point that I'd, I'd make court, and obviously we'll give you a more detailed in written response, is obviously that's a, a dispute that's currently between the RNT Trade Union and Northern Rail. Uh, and obviously we're as conscious as, as you are that we'd like to see a negotiated settlement to that uh, dispute. But those bodies are probably in a better place to, to answer your question. What I would say, though, is one of the things that we're very keen to, to do is see a negotiated uh, agreement to uh, bring that dispute to an end. And through Transport for the North, we have supported calls to sort of ensure there's a second person on every train to try to bring forward talks that can then sort of lead to a negotiated settlement. Thank you. 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 Thank you